Scenes from just outside Garrison Headquarters, Major General Alan Pepin, Commanding General, Joint Force Headquarters, National Capital Region, Military District of Washington, and Fort Meade Senior Commander made his first official visit to Fort Meade last week after assuming command in June. The General worked out with soldiers from the Garrison Headquarters Command Battalion and met with Garrison leadership. Hello and welcome to Meade Week. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, the legal office advocates for service members in Maryland testing the new canine thermal monitor and delays in PCS shipments. These stories and more, but first at the July 1st installation town hall, much of the discussion centered on falling COVID case rates and a possible move from health protection condition Bravo to HBCon Alpha. Fast forward four weeks and COVID infection rates are going the other way. At this week's town hall, Garrison Commander Colonel Chris Nyland took a moment to talk about vaccinations. Currently, the Fort Meade area sits um, at about the Army average, and our community is, is between 55 and 60 percent vaccinated. That being said, if you have decided, and it is your choice, if you have decided to not get vaccinated, I would just ask each and every one of you to take this opportunity to reconsider that decision. You may have made that decision several months ago, and the conditions have changed. Now is a great opportunity to challenge your own perceptions, make sure that they're still valid, make sure the reasons you've chosen not to get vaccinated are still good reasons. The science has proven the single most effective thing that we can do to protect ourselves, to protect our families, to protect our communities is to get vaccinated. The town hall focused on COVID and housing questions. You can watch it in its entirety on our Facebook page. The next town hall is on August 12th. It's a back to school edition with Child and Youth Services Director Fran Jamison and School Liaison Officer Sarah Bonice. In other news, a team from the U.S. Army Medical Test and Evaluation Activity in San Antonio spent last week at Fort Meade testing the new K-9 thermal monitor collar. Uh, what we do is we are the operational tester uh, for all medical equipment, medical related items, and medical IT systems. So if it's got medical in it uh, and it needs to be operationally tested, uh, we're the organization that does that for the Army. The evaluation team partnered with the 2nd Military Working Dog Detachment at Fort Meade to test the collar. The thermal monitor is designed to prevent heat related injuries and death. The first um, main military working death caused in an operational environment is, you know, from shrapnel um, and, and them being in the fight. Um, the second leading cause of death is heat injury. So these collars are really there to protect the dogs and, um, and make sure that we don't have any deaths that we could prevent. Dog handlers were given scenarios with temperature readings taken before and after. The data collected will be used to determine whether the device will be used going forward. And what do the dog handlers think? We ask Kennel Master Sergeant First Class Sean John. As we make technological advances, then we should advance the way that we treat and the way that we track or even the, the standard of, uh, of living for our dogs. We'll have more from the evaluation team next week on our digital need page. Meanwhile, on our last show, we spoke with the Legal Assistance Office and their efforts to help pass legislation to aid disabled veterans with a 100% disability rating get accepted for property taxes. This week, we speak with Legal Center's Yosefi Seltzer about other areas the staff judge advocate is working on for military members in Maryland. We're always on the lookout for legislation that is um, beneficial to the military community. One of the other initiatives we're working on, I will mention, is Maryland is a two-party um, consent requirement to make audio recordings um, admissible in courts here in Maryland, in state courts. Um, we are very sensitive to the domestic violence concerns uh, in the state and victims of domestic violence, survivors of domestic violence would like to have audio recordings admissible in court proceedings for civil protective orders and potentially for criminal cases. Elsewhere, a quick reminder from the education offices in the National Capital Region, the Joint Base Meyer-Henderson Hub, which includes Fort Meade, is offering a virtual education fair from August 16th through the 27th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. each day. For more information on links to the fair, to register or to RSVP, you can scan the QR code on their flyer that we published on our Facebook page. And a final note, our public affairs office is undergoing some remediation and renovation over the next couple of weeks, so the next Mead Week will be published on August 27th. If there's any changes, stay tuned to our social media platforms for more information. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.